Today I share with you the experience I made with the Carvera desktop CNC by developing a $1 minigame console. <laughs> yes! End of last year I was asked by Josh from Makera if I want to review the Cavera desktop CNC. And you might have watched my mini CNC video from before where I tried to mill aluminium with, uh, yeah, not so great results. <laughs> Since the Cavera is claimed to be able to mill aluminium, brass, copper while being precise using servo motors and ball screws at the same time, I had to try it. What could go wrong? The CNC came in a huge crate and my first challenge was to get it down in my lap in one piece. <laughs> my butt is wet but I live <laughs> and it's not damaged. So I didn't drop it. Okay. Look how these are slippery. Does it fit through the door? I hope so. Oh no. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> I think I can take out the door and now it should fit, huh? This loot crate is mine. Oh, Fortuna! Ah! 100 kilograms! With the CNC came a lot of tools and kits. Some of these kits are optional like the 4th axis and the PCB kit. The axes were secured in place with some sheet metal pieces. Once those were off, I checked out the toolkits. The set included with the Cavera came with some cool CNC mounting brackets, some tools to handle the automatic tool changer, utensils to calibrate the work pieces and an example kit and instructions. Yeah, it's like exacto knife, but it's a saw. <laughs> the PCB kit had the wireless probe, solder mask tools, drills, rivets, and plenty of extra bits. 0.3 millimeter drill bits. What? <laughs> I'm a trained professional. Here we go. The fourth access kit is a highlight, as you will see later. But enough of this, it was time to test it. The arm for the tablet is super convenient. The Cavera control app is compatible with Android, Windows and Mac. However, I needed to update the firmware of the Cavera to be able to use the Wi-Fi properly and the USB connection didn't work with my Android tablet at the time. Using the Windows laptop worked fine though. After that, Wi-Fi was working and I was able to use the Android app to control it. Oh! I recharged the wireless probe and played around with the tool change, Friends. which is really convenient. Ah! Ah! It even automatically measures the tool length. So you only need to set up your tools once and run the jobs without any interruptions. I started with the examples shipped with the Cavera to get familiar with it. The PCBs are milled on a sacrificial HDF board. The instructions show how to do everything step by step to get familiar with the machine. Unfortunately, loading the toolpath in the Android app crashed every time. Crashed. I hope the Makera people fix that as I love using the tablet here. With the laptop, everything works fine. Ah, okay, that works. Should we just press run? Okay, let's press run. Oh, it's moving, it's moving. The machine offers a few ways to calibrate the dimensions of the workpiece. The simplest one is tracing the outline of the toolpath for the laser dot, then probing the height for perfect Z compensation. For the first job I left the XPEC system up to be able to film what's happening on the PCB. And it's awesome out of the box. Oh shit! Ah! Ah! Run away! After the first toolpath, I noticed some artifacts that I wasn't able to classify yet. Next part was the solder mask. 
it cured with UV and in the kit was a nail polish UV lamp included. I powered it from a power bank and then the first okay, mishap happened. Oh, shit. Uh, People on the livestream are enjoying my fail moments the most. I destroyed it! How else would you sit through a five hours of painful <laughs> dilatancy? I ripped it off! Oh no, I, I dropped my power bank and destroyed it! I need to repair this. I replaced it with another UV lamp I had for curing resin prints and repaired the broken USB meanwhile. I completely ripped ripped the pads of the PCB. What I learned here already is to rather use thinner layers for it to cure better. Next step is to clear the pads from the solder mask while keeping the copper intact. That is done with a spring-loaded bit, which I never saw before that. Let's see if I can... how silent it is when I close the door. Oh! Closing the cover dampens the noise level immensely. Next step was drilling the holes and the x vac system did a good job collecting the dust. While the Cavera was doing its job, we tried to take some cover this pictures. Is the cover picture. Believe me, I hate it more than you do. What is it drilling so much? The last step is the board outline. The example took way more passes than I would do, but that's probably why my bit usage is slightly above average. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of truth. For comparison, a finish board for the example project was included. And this is how we were able to identify that there is more to the artifacts from this, before. This, this is not round. What kind of problem is that? All round millings were skewed, which is caused by a backlash of one axis. The X and Z axis seemed alright. Josh from Makera was super helpful with that. We identified the backlash in the y-axis, which is the movement of the working platform. Yeah, that's moving. That's actually the issue. He sent me instructions how to open the cover and simply tighten the ball screw, yeah. which fixed this problem. I ran the example again and this time the result was flawless. The comparison... That was easy to fix. It's just one screw. You probably, like me, already watched Scotty from Strange Parts finishing that example, so I rather wanted to try other features. The fourth axis first. I must admit I love it. But the ultimate final test before we make our own project. My old nemesis. Aluminium.
I think I have a new champion in my lab. So what is my honest opinion on the Cavera? The core features are great, the tool change, the leveling, power and server precisions are awesome. As we will see in my project later, we can mill traces of 0.2mm and get perfect footprints for 0.6mm pin pitch, probably even 05 I didn't test the laser engraving capabilities as I don't have any proper ventilations in my lab for that. The hood dampens the sound a lot and protects the surroundings from flying bits. I personally had some problems with the XVEC mount which seems not perfection yet. Still it didn't self-destruct despite me messing up a few this times. This wasn't good. Regarding the software features, the Wi-Fi connectivity with the update is awesome. I can monitor it from another room while it's performing its job. The app is great covering all the features that the machine provides. However, I hope they fix the Android version if they haven't yet. For generating the toolpaths, you need a third-party software right now. There are a few free tools and some professional ones. The machine profiles are available on the website. For PCBs I'm using Flatcam and for the other stuff I'm getting familiar with Fusion right now. For more information on the Cavera, check out the link below. And now to our own project to put it to an actual test. I wanted to make a simple game console that's made from a minimal screen made of LEDs to input buttons and sound. To have an extra challenge, I wanted to keep the cost of the parts below $1. That's the perfect case for our 10 cent Risk 5. Check out my other projects on that. I made a quick design in KiCad and imported the Gerbers to Flatcam, where we started to learn the best way to make the toolpaths. We have 0.2 mm step. I don't know how many we want to break there. Meanwhile, there is also a tutorial on Makera's channel. But we started from zero on the live stream, trying to determine the best settings. First point on the fail checklist is to break a bit. That's done easy with a too low travel height. Yeah, you can see already the damage copper before. Next point, milling too deep and too narrow for traces to remain. I tried to assemble it, but it was doomed to fail. Broken. Only one trace. The next try the results were looking promising. However, the devil lies in the detail. I milled only one trace and didn't do a second clearing path next to it. So some traces were shorting. With each setting that we figured out, the confidence was rising and it was time to double down. I changed the design to be two-sided and not use any bridging wires. Milling two-sided PCBs requires using these steel packs to flip along one axis perfectly aligned. Having a deeper sacrificial board for the packs to go in would be better. However, I winked it this time and was ready to solder. This looks usable. The vias are using these super thin bolts, which are also easy to solder. However, the true holes that also need to conduct are using these rivets. There was no riveting tool included, so I tried to solder these. That was a pain in the butt, but I finished, so I thought. It turned out some of the rivets had cold solder joints and I couldn't be bothered desoldering the LEDs again. I changed the design to only use vias and no conducting true holes and did the final run. Meanwhile, I made a nice cheat sheet with all the parameters to get a nice PCB melt. First of all, I milled a nice thick sacrificial board and started milling the PCB after that.
The only issue I encountered this time is that I used a double sided sticky tape on the first side within the bounds of the milling. That scratched the copper while removing it. And the tape remains were hard to remove. But my friends, that was the last lesson of the steep learning curve. And we finally had a nice board. The registration was good and the traces and pads were nice. This time I checked continuity first and tried to get a clean soldering job even without a solder mask. Okay, that one is gone. <laughs> Recording the fake uh, happiness for the for the video. Yoohoo! It works! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Okay, cool. <laughs> After the initial test it was clear that it would work and it was time for some coding. Hacker mode activated. And this is the current state after the prototyping phase. Now that everything is worked out, for a production run I let the PCB manufacture now. The console currently has a simple sequencer a music player, snakes, flappy birds, and a torch. And I'm working on a communication interface right now, the pink link. Please subscribe to not miss that. And how about the $1 gold? The bomb cost including all parts, battery case and even a plastic bag is below $1. But I figured out that sticky labels are expensive, so there's only room in the budget for a 1cm wide label. Okay, okay, in the end it will be probably more than $10, considering all the other costs. Still, with all the settings dialed in, the CNC is a quick way to get a PCB prototype in one hour, and to figure out everything before ordering at a fab house. I hope you liked this video and the small project. Great thanks to all my supporters and people following along on my live streams. I see you next time. Bye. We have a small roller. I love rollers. <laughs> oh shit. I should put my greasy forehead on that. <laughs>